The Mercies of God Lamentations 3 verses 22 to 23 says the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The book of Lamentation contains laments or loud cries for Jerusalem and many expressions of anguish and pain. But in the third chapter, the prophet Jeremiah wrote a beautiful passage of confidence and hope. His tone changes from despair to hope. He starts in Lamentation 3, verse 21. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The prophet says he recalled, he remembered, that God is faithful and will not cast away his people forever. He recalled this to his mind, that every day, every morning, God shows his mercy and compassion and that his steadfast love never ceases, and his mercies are new every morning. Biblically, mercy is God withholding a just punishment. In other words, mercy holds back from us what we really deserve. In Lamentation 3 verse 22, it has to do with his tender love, great and tender mercy, or pity, God has and shows great compassion and kindness for his people and his mercies for them are new every morning. He does not use yesterday's mercies, but for each and every day of your life and my life, God has got brand new mercies to pour out on us. Alleluia! The reason for this is that God is so faithful and Jeremiah says in verse 23, Great is your faithfulness. God is unchanging, and his mercies towards his holy nation were unfaltering, and so he is with us as believers. He kept his covenant with Abraham's descendants, and this was the bright ray of hope that shone through their lives. The dawning of every new day is a symbol of God's light breaking through the darkness, and mercy comes in your life and my life. And his mercies overcome and overshadow our troubles. Every morning demonstrates God's grace and mercies, a new beginning in which every gloom must flee. You and I need to recall in our minds the nature of the God we serve. We don't need to look further than the breath in our lungs the sun that shines upon us, and the rain that falls to nourish the soil that gives us food. We continue to see the mercies of God manifesting in our lives in many ways. God's mercies towards us do not expire, neither does he run out of them, because they are new every morning, and his mercies endure forever, according to Psalm 136 and they are from generation to generation. God is abounding in mercy, according to Psalm 103, verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. You and I can have our ups and downs, but God is faithful through it all. With each day comes a new batch of compassion made freshly available at your doorstep. God's mercies are poured out to us daily from an infinite store. Some days we get up on the wrong side of the bed, but even then, we still find God's mercies awaiting us because He is a faithful and a merciful God. Believers still sin and grieve the Holy Spirit, but forgiveness is always available. 1 John 1 verses 8 to 9 If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God's mercy is ready to forgive our sins as they are atoned by the blood of Jesus on the cross as long as we confess our sins. We serve a great, loving, and merciful God and because of his great love, 
we are not consumed. In Jesus Christ, we have the full expression of God's mercy and compassion, according to Matthew 14, verse 14. When Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them, and healed their sick. Jesus, seeing the great crowd waiting for him on the shore, is filled with compassion. He healed and fed them. He is still the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He is still moved with compassion for us, his saints. Apostle Paul described Jesus as the image of the invisible God. In other words, he shows us what God the Father is like. Jesus reveals in this moment and the countless others that God is the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction. Psalm 119 verse 64 says, The earth, O Lord, is full of your mercy. Teach me your statutes. David had been exiled, but had never been driven beyond the range of God's mercy, for he found the earth to be full of the mercies of God. He had wandered in the deserts, and hidden in caves and strongholds, and he had still felt the loving kindness of the Lord. David learned that far and beyond the land of promise, the love of God extended. In this verse, he expressed that large-hearted idea of God, and not only is there mercy all over the world, but there is such an abundance of it that the earth is full of it. This is so encouraging to know that the earth is full of mercy and the mercies of God are there in abundance for you and me as children of God. The psalmist knew that the Lord was his portion and he hoped to receive and obtain a measure of his mercy for himself and he was encouraged to pray, Teach me your statutes. David could not think of a greater mercy than this. Indeed, mercy is in the air which we breathe, and it is like public springs for all they that are thirsty. The mercies of God are available for you and me. Ephesians 2 verse 4 says, God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Here the Apostle Paul presents the reason why we were rescued from the state of deadness. It was purely because God was rich in mercy and had a great love for us. Every reason for God's mercy and love is found in Him. We give Him no reason to love us most of the time, yet in His richness in mercy and the greatness of His love, He loves us anyway with such great love. Romans 9 verse 15 says, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. Paul is quoting from Exodus 33 verse 19, where God was speaking to Moses, and he was rejecting the idea that God was being unjust. The right to decide who received benefits from God was a decision left to exactly one being, and that is God himself. Paul offers this quote to show that God retains the right to choose for himself, to whom he will give his favor. Yet the earth is full of God's mercy. And because he is rich in mercy, he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good. And he sends rain on the just and on the unjust, according to Matthew 5, verse 45. Psalm 145 verses 8 to 9 says, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are all over his work. God is not just compassionate, but he is full of compassion and great in mercy. His greatness is shown in his mercy and the manifestation of that mercy is on a large scale. Mercy is said to go before the face of God because God sends mercy before judgment. Jesus said in Matthew 9 verse 13, But go 
and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I did not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Know this, child of God, the Lord desires to be merciful to you. God bless you.